Hi everybody, this is Joe with Fusil CC, and today I'm going to be sharing how to implement a relatively new and cool feature in Construct 3, which is the mesh distortion feature. And specifically, I'm going to show how you can change it dynamically. And for me, I'm going to be applying a quadratic Bezier curve to manipulate platforms inside of a physics-based uh, game. So. Lots of information there. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through just a little bit about mesh distortion. It's been around since uh, October, November of 2020, and also show you how I incorporate it into my game. I do assume that you know how to do some of the basics of Construct 3, so feel free to look at tutorials online, including some of my own, if you're still learning how to use Construct 3. But inside of this, we will just be focusing on the mesh distortion as well as how to apply a Bezier curve to that to dynamically change a sprite during runtime. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and, and take a look at what we're working with. Okay, so the first thing you should be aware of is inside of the editor, there already are three or four great um, templates that you can use as a primer for how to use mesh distortion. This is where I started. Uh, if you come in here, they've got a quick platform, which kind of shows you, hey, look, if I uh, use the editor, I can make my normal bar look a little bit more interesting and my character will run along it. So basically the physics and the platform behavior work nicely with uh, mesh distortion. So that's, that's big thumbs up, right? And this next one, this is what I think we typically think of when we think of mesh, mesh distortion. Uh, we can, you know, manipulate, you know, the, the shape and the image that's on uh, the sprite and maybe give a little bit more life to your character or some other interesting visual effects. And then this third one is what really got me thinking a little bit. And this is where they start to dynamically apply and change with like a signed function, some interesting effects to the, uh, the mesh. And so then I was like, all right, well, how could I make this more of a game element? And what I came up with that I thought was a little bit interesting that I wanted to share with all of you guys was, taking a platform in a physics-based game and putting some controls on my keyboard to change the shape using three control points of my platform and a Bezier curve. So let's go ahead and look at what we created. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play and give you guys a quick feel. You've probably seen games like this, right? You've got some liquid that's falling down and I've got these platforms, right? And I kinda wanna make it land in the bucket. You know, and I could, you know, probably have created this game in different ways without mesh distortion, right? But this is kind of a fun way to apply the, uh, the new capabilities. So I've currently got this uh, top one selected. Now what I'm able to do though now is I've got these three points, the left, the right, and then the middle that I can now control. And you can see the yellow dots are actually the mesh points that I am obtaining through a Bezier quadratic curve equation uh, dynamically during runtime and applying it to the mesh to cause it to distort and the physics behaviors are all working with it and it's pretty cool so I can go ahead and you know start manipulating all these right and seeing if I can come up with a fun shape where I'm scoring more points and however else you can <laughs> envision this being used right so this is, this is pretty cool. I was really excited when this was working and it's it's pretty slick that, you know, all the physics and the platformer behaviors all work very nicely. I mean, this is pretty smooth. I mean, I'm doing this every tick. Uh, I'm running these functions and, uh, you know, the physics behavior is working exactly as I expected. So this is awesome. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at how we made this game. Okay, like I said, I'm going to focus just on the bare essentials for how to implement this because I'm assuming that you kind of already know how to use Construct 3. Um, first of all, this water effect I totally took from another YouTuber uh, who did a great tutorial on it. I'll link it down below. It uses an alpha clamp. I think it's a pretty cool visual effect, uh, but link below to see how to do that. Uh, as far as setting up these meshes there's lots of information already on construct but if you wanted to do it manually kind of right click and you can use the mesh editor inside of the game editor and do it that way but we're doing it dynamically right so there's a couple things we have to do so in the event sheet um there's a number of things i'm doing to to set up the game but the main thing that i want to show you is this first function which is transform platform 
And really, the, the secret sauce of how this is all working is I've got three, think of three points or control points that I need to pass into a function, which I'll show you, to get back an array of X's and Y's, which is that nice slope uh, that we are looking at inside of the editor. And in my case, I was, I was asking for an array of 25 of them. And I thought that was a nice number to keep it fairly smooth from a granularity perspective. So in the editor here, I've called that P0, P1, and P2. And I set up some simple controls that will let me control how much I want to influence that using kind of WASD across the keyboard uh, for the left, middle, and right. And once I did that, I'm passing that in to this function that I've called transform platform. And really the goal of this is just to kick off this small JavaScript um, that I wrote that is utilizing a Bezier curve equation. Now the equation that I'm utilizing, you can find here on Wikipedia, link down below. And specifically I'm using a quadratic Bezier curve. And this is the equation uh, that I'm using. And it's asking for P0, a P1, and a P2. And what it returns is the X or Y, depending on what you're feeding it, along that line. So I can take this and take my X and Y for 0, 1, and 2 and get back based off however granular I want it to be, 5, 10, 25, 100, uh, that many X's and Y's that make up that line. So coming back to the editor, inside of here, after I kick this off, you can see that I'm passing in the 0, 1, and 2, X and Y, as well as my granularity and my ID for which block I'm working with because I have more than one. In granularity, I set the 25 points. I define two empty arrays of X and Y, and then I go ahead and I do the for loop, which incorporates those equation, the equation that we just looked at. So we get our X array and our Y array using the, that equation and I'm incrementing it using the granularity as what's driving how much to step forward each time. Once I have that result, I'm then able to pass that to an array object inside of construct three, which I've called X's out and Y's out, uh, as you can see here. And first what I do is I set the length equal to the size of my array that I have inside the script, and then I populate that with this for loop um, and then at the end, I call a quick function, basically just letting the editor know that, or the event sheet know that, hey, I'm done, and let's go and do something with those X's and Y's. So let's go back to the event sheet. So I've done that, I've got my X's and my Y's, this is called, and I'm able to quickly kind of now do the magic where, first, I'm using a visual aid to kind of show what it looks like with these little yellow mesh points, and I use the X's and Y's to set the position of those mesh points. There's probably a number of different ways you can accomplish this. Um, I only did, wanted to do the Bezier curve once on the top set of my mesh, and I'm only doing two rows. So I kind of did a quick hack here, and I basically said, if, hey, if I'm if I'm on my uh, my first row, my zero row, you know, apply uh, use the Bezier curve uh, that I just calculated. If I'm on my second row, just take that same number and add 32 to the Y because that's how thick I want my bar to be and that that worked out just fine because I just wanted to convert uh, control the top of the of the sprite and once I did that then I'm able to apply which is most the most critical step is the set mesh point and this is what really lets you dynamically control it so in order to set the mesh point you need to provide okay which column and row point am I manipulating so for us it's mesh point dot mesh column and mesh point dot mesh row i defined that um, earlier when i set up on the beginning of the layout uh, let me see if i can show you that so in the beginning of the layout i did a quick loop through um, each of the mesh columns and mesh rows that i had set up uh, which matched my granularity that i was using mesh granularity for columns, so that's 25, and number of rows is two, just the top and the bottom. I created a mesh point along each of those, and I set my um, mesh column and mesh row and my platform ID at the very beginning of the layout. And uh, those are just instance variables on the mesh point over here, mesh column, mesh row, and platform ID. 
So coming back to the magic step here where we're populating this set mesh point, <clears throat> that's how we know which one we're working with. I'm using the absolute mode. I'm still kind of learning how to use relative, but for this example, absolute is what you need. And then I'm using an unlerp and I'm passing, and this is kind of an important step, the bounding box left, bounding box right, and then the third point is my mesh point.x. And then similarly, my mesh point.y that we're working with. So as I manipulate my mesh point up and down, this is really just following it now uh, by using this equation. And one thing that's important is this bounding box left and bounding box right and top and bottom, it needs to be set up and static. And you need to set it up in the very beginning before you start to manipulate it. Otherwise, it, you get this weird flickering and it doesn't really mimic the shape because your overall bounding box is changing as you are also deforming the mesh. So you need to do it at the beginning before you start deforming it. And that's an important step. And the way to kind of keep that all static is I'm just on a family object here. I've got not only my P0, P1, and P2, that's where I'm storing that information, but I'm also storing my bounding box information that I set up in the beginning of uh, the, the, the load, which you can see up here. I set my you know P0, 1, and 2, and then my bounding box information here. So. This information will be available uh, through, or the project file will be available on my itch link down below. Uh, so if you wanna take a little bit more time to look through all this, uh, please do. But that's kind of the magic behind it. Um, we got our array of points for X and Y. I'm able to do that dynamically by continuously moving those three control points and getting back my X's and Y's and updating the mesh points along uh, each of the mesh, point, uh, mesh points on the sprites. And you can do that every single tick, and it's pretty smooth as you just saw in the game. So I'll play it one more time, and hopefully you can appreciate now what's going on. So we've got our, uh, our controls here. I'm able to take the right side. I can change the middle. I can set this up. And you know what? This is really fun. Uh, let's see if I can get some points here by uh, dumping this guy out. Uh, let's wait for it. Uh Ah, oh, there we go. I got I got maybe like 60% of them. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully this was a useful tutorial for you, quick tip and trick on how to use mesh uh, distortion and do it dynamically, which I thought was really cool. Uh, so if you enjoyed that, please consider subscribing, liking, ringing the bell, all those good things. And uh, I'll catch up with you next time. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice day.